Okay, so we're now on to looking at the freezers, and I'm starting with the Siphonian Treasury at Delphi. Now, a treasury is a building designed to house votive offerings to a god or goddess. In this case, with it being Delphi, it would be to the god Apollo. So that's quite a functional statement, but if you have a look at the building, there's nothing very functional about it. It's beautifully decorated. There is pedimental sculpture. There are four sides of a frieze sculpted. And instead of just standard columns, we've got women or caryatids in the porch. And not to forget as well, looking at the bottom image, that these images would have been very, very brightly coloured. So it's a display of wealth and a statement about the Siphonians at a large Pan-Hellenic sanctuary that would have got lots of visitors in and out. Now, for our purposes, we're just going to look in detail at two sides of the frieze. I will go through with you just in a moment what the four subject matters were for the entire piece of art, but two of the sides are better preserved than others, and therefore more likely you're going to want to use them as examples in the exam. So, just to run through those subject matters, on the north we have got a gigantomachy, or a battle between gods and giants. On the east we have a scene from the Trojan War, we've got Achilles and Memnon fighting one another with the body of Antilochus beneath their feet, so that's Nestor's son, um, and the gods are sat in council to the side of them, kind of discussing and deciding the fate of these two men. We've also got an abduction scene. I can't tell you um, of which female individually, we're not entirely sure, but there is a, a woman being kind of spirited away on a horse. And we've also got a scene that people believe is the judgment of Paris because we have uh, goddesses arriving on chariots. So if we put those four subject matters together, we have got a common theme of the superiority of the gods. They will punish you for wrongdoing. They will decide your fate. And this is very, very applicable for a site like Delphi, uh, where you are meant to, to think about the maxims, know thyself when you are approaching the temple of Apollo. Um, and no doubt these thoughts would have going, be going through the minds of the visitors as they walked along the sacred way and viewed these particular friezes. Okay, so we're now looking at the North Frieze. At the top, we've got a, a span of a large section of that side, the Gigantomachy. And then at the bottom, we're going to go into more detail with a very specific part of it. So at the top, I'm going to start by talking through what we can see, and then we'll have a look at the significance of it. So we have a figure striding forward, wearing what looks like, at first thought, a lion skin around his neck, but is in fact Dionysus, therefore that will be a tiger skin. And he's uh, got Themis on the chariot in front of him, goddess, representative of law and order. And then that chariot is being pulled by lions. And one of the lions, as you can see, is attacking there one of the giants and actually rather brutally biting into his stomach. Just ahead, we've then got in mirrored poses, Apollo, remember whose uh, sanctuary Delphi is, mirrored with his twin sister, Artemis, striding forwards together. We've then got a giant trying to flee, but looking back at the gods in pursuit of him. And then we've also got three giants, again, mirrored poses, their shields overlapping, providing pattern there. Um, and just beneath their feet, we have got a fallen giant as well. Now, something there that should really jump out at you is the appearance of the giants themselves. They look like Greeks, and yet gigantomachies, the giants are usually the other, the foreigner, compared to the Greek gods. And the reason they look like Greeks is because they're dressed as Greek warriors or hoplites from Hopla for the round shield. And this is where this idea of the gods as superior, um, administering punishment or serving warnings comes in because the viewer of the North Frieze is meant to associate themselves actually with the giants. And we're seeing the giants therefore being punished at the hands of the gods for any hubris, a very important didactic message at a religious sanctuary. <laughs> It's also interesting to note that the giant that's lying on the floor 
is actually not wearing anything at all compared to the others who I've just said are wearing the Greek armour. Now, this is something that is referred to as pathetic nudity. Nudity in art can have all sorts of different meanings. Uh, heroic. Um, sometimes it can be linked to athleticism if they're participating in sport. But on this occasion, it serves to make that individual look incredibly vulnerable. And we will see this in other examples as well. Now, let's come to the detail at the bottom then and try and pick out some more interesting um, features of this composition. So, as I've said before, we've already got mirrored poses and pattern provided by the, the round shields in between individuals fighting. But I quite like the emotion of this scene as well. Um, even though it's, a, it's an archaic piece of art, there is a real amount of feeling that we, we don't always see in other pieces from this period. So, let's look at the giant that is being eaten by the lion even though we cannot see his face there's just something about the the expression created you know by the helmet itself that makes us feel pathos for this particular guy also the one that's trying to escape as well the fact that he is striding forward and yet still looking back in horror at Apollo and Artemis who are pursuing him and uh, notice the impossible pose there this is the archaic period of of his body being twisted entirely round but it gives us that impression of this kind of sheer panic and fear in the faces and the body language of the giants themselves so it's a particularly powerful message to any Greeks viewing this north side of the frieze Okay, so we're now looking at the east part of the frieze. Now, this is the Trojan War scene where we've got the gods in council deciding the fate of the warriors. And then we've got Achilles fighting Memnon. And if you look at the scene at the bottom, it's Achilles on the right-hand side with the gorgon on his shield. And then with the longer, more exotic hair, we've got Memnon, who is king of the Ethiopians, a Trojan ally, and also son of the goddess of the dawn, and these two are fighting over the body of Antilochus that you can see lying on the floor there. Uh, and he is obviously famously Nestor's son, who we meet in book three of the Odyssey. Now, I might have these two images placed above and beneath one another, but just remember this is one frieze or one side of the frieze. And in fact, the warriors fighting would just be to the right hand side of the gods. And therefore, you've got a really interesting contrast between a very still scene and a very active one. So let's have a look at who the gods are in this particular section. There are some more as well that you could see if we had moved a little further along and I'll refer to those as well you'll have the images in your booklet but this is enough of a kind of uh, an idea to be able to talk about the emotions of the gods and, and what they're actually doing with those raised arms so starting on the left hand side with the round hopla shield is Ares and he's kind of sat back a little bit from the other gods he's less involved we've then got Eos who is Memnon's mother, as I've previously said. And notice how she is leaning forwards with her arms out in appeal. So she's appealing for the life of her son. And look where her appeal is going. So the person on the right-hand side of the image has got more of a substantial chair. He's actually got an arm to his chair. So that's Zeus. She's appealing to Zeus as the overseer of fate and justice. On the other side um, of the gods in council, you also see Thetis doing exactly the same from the, from the other side in a kind of almost mirrored pose to Eos, appealing for her son, Achilles. So there's an immense amount of pathos and feeling in this scene as, as two mothers appeal for the lives of their sons, and yet we know that one of them will be lost. In front of Eos, with a similar pose in terms of her arms, is commonly thought to be Artemis because of the way in which she's holding the face of the man in front of her and with his long loose hair and the no beard this is is Apollo so we've got that pathos from the gods when we go to the scene below then Again, we feel a, a huge amount of, of kind of pathos when we look at the fallen body of Antilochus on the floor. And notice how he is the only figure on this entire frieze that actually looks out 
towards the viewer that faces us um and again you know we're, we're constantly having to to confront fallen victims on this freeze we, we see it again with with some of the giants there's one of the fallen giants that look out at us and i think it's, it's a real immersive piece of art and one that encourages um deeper thinking from the viewer especially along those lines we mentioned before about their own behavior and the way in which they respect the greek gods